Hey, it's Joe Crypto, back for another episode of All Things Crypto. Sorry I've taken a long hiatus. It's been a little crypto winter and there's been really nothing to review that's worth my time. Until now, here I may I present to you the Watts Miner M1033T Bitcoin Miner. Yes, 33T with 65 watts per terahash. My friends at wattsminer.net invited me over to their warehouse in Florida to do this video with them and here it is. So you can see that the box itself comes one piece now. The PSU is now enclosed and uh, it looks pretty neat. Let's take a look. Let's get it unboxed and uh, I'll give you a better look at it. Okay, so here you have it. I've unboxed it and you got the M10 Watts Miner here. The power supply is built onto it. It's hardwired, as you can see here, is the, uh, the, the pinage. And you plug it in here. Remember, this only takes 208 to 240 volts. So you gotta have a, um, a plug that can accommodate that in the USA or you gotta have uh, 220 in Europe and other places. So be careful. Uh, this is their new power supply, the M10 model. And you can see the specs right here. Um, make sure that all your boxes have the serial numbers and they have the version number. This is version 1.0. Okay, it has another serial number now on the sides as well as on the back of the PSU. So I'm gonna give you a little spin around here of the box before I plug it in. And uh, you can take a look at the front here. Um, there's the MAC address and so forth. Um, you can see that they've just encased this whole thing and there's screws here and here that hold this on. I'm sure when it comes off, it's just the power supply. Uh, just as we know it under there, but it is hardwired. So you don't have to deal with these nine pin uh, connectors that really hurt your fingers if you're plugging in a lot. So the first consensus I say is that the M10 is definitely easier to rack and stack for big farms. Um, that's going to be a big plus if you got lots of quantity of them. Now let's go into the back and fire it up. See you soon. Okay, I'm back. So I'm here in the uh, little lab they got set up with the uh, 220 volt uh, USA type plugs. You can see them here. Let me get a better closer look here. That's what uh, they got to plug into. Um, that's going to be just on another end, just like this. So we're gonna plug that into here. And then we're gonna plug just the ethernet cable into the front here. It's going to get uh, its IP address via DHCP and we should be on and getting ready to set up to hash. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, here we go. Powering on. So I can see it's now it's not that hot. Okay, it's spinning down, it's probably winding up, and now it's gonna start uh, revving up the frequency on the hashing. As this uh, gets up to 33T, I'm expecting this to get really hot, blowing out the back here, okay, and uh, taking in cool air on the front. 
the PSU fan is here as well. I feel air sucking in here, and I feel a lot of air coming from there. And you can see when I touch it, it changes. So there is good fanage inside this casing. And yeah, so it looks like it's online. Let's go back and uh, check out the desktop and uh, see what it's hashing at. Okay, so I found the box on my network and I'm going to log in. Then I'm going to look at the CG Miner status page and my configuration has already been put in here. So I'm just waiting for the box to start up and hash. There's a process that happens in the beginning of uh, the boot up sequence that checks the chips and so forth. And that's what takes a little more time for it to start hashing. So I'm going to reload here a few times and wait till I start seeing the numbers come here in the summary. Shouldn't be much longer. It usually takes about two, two and a half minutes. Okay, I'm going to reload again and we should start seeing it hash. And okay, there you have it. So we can see that it's now hashing at 10. You can see all three boards come alive and you can see their frequencies as well as their hashing powers. You can see the effective chips, which are 105 per board. So we're seeing all the chips and you're going to see the temperature. I'm going to continue to uh, reload this. And as I do, it should increase in, uh, in gigahertz. Uh, what you're seeing is the elapsed time is changing because CG Miner is restarting on its own. There's, a, there's an automatic process on warm up. To, uh, it should take about three to five minutes to get fully up to speed. There you have it now we're at 14 and you're starting to see the frequency increase as well as the hashing we're still at the same effective rate i'm going to go ahead and reload again and there you have it now we're at 33. so uh it took a few minutes to get up there but we're up to 33 terahertz uh, and you could see the uh, chips are running pretty good at between 72 and 74 degrees. I'm going to give it another reload. And there you go. Uh, we're starting to hash. We're accepting uh, shares and we should be seeing ourselves on the pool. So the M10 does actually do what it's performing. Okay, so I'm back after a little bit and I've left it for an hour and a half. And you can see we're still at 33 terahertz. All the boards are still performing. The temperatures are still good. And I believe this is a solid miner. I'm going to conclude my video by going to the panel and hanging a tester off to give you a view of how much amperage we're pulling at 208. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm back here. The last part of my video, I'm going to show you the amperage that we're pulling here for the new M10 to verify power for everybody. So here we go. Um, I'm going to be using this Ames uh, tester here. And um, so I'm going to switch it to 40 amps here. Okay. And so you see it's reading zero. I'm going to hang it on this breaker here, which is the breaker that we're using, I was told. It is the uh, 240 volts. 120 and check it out let's see okay there she is so look at that we're doing about 9.26 not bad I think that converts to somewhere a little above 2100 I'm not sure I have to do the math but yeah there you go 9.27 Oh, there you have it. Okay, so the Watts miner I have has been on over an hour since I uh, started the video and, and uh, we're running at, at this amperage here. So there's the proof. The Watts miner M10 does run at the specs. It does produce 33T and around the 65 
per terahash wattage. All right, this is Joe Crypto, over and out.